You know, I'd barely owned my pizzeria for about 30 days when I'd realized I'd made the biggest mistake of my life. And I wanted to get rid of it. I, I really felt defeated. This business was so overwhelming. The employees, the dough hook coming off the mixer, dough blowing up in the walk-in when it crapped out. And I just thought, oh my God, what have I done? And so I decided I was gonna sell the place and um, hired a guy named Richard to come and spiff it up just a little bit. The counter was really kind of messy and I thought a new buyer, somebody coming to look would uh, want that, you know, first impression thing. So I wanted to make it look a little nicer. So Richard's coming in at closing. So a little after nine o'clock, he gets started, says he'll be done by midnight, but I know Richard and, and I know it's probably gonna run a little longer. So I've had a long day as it is. And I said, Richard, here's the deal. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna go up and, uh, take a little nap on top of the walk-in, you just kind of tap me on the shoulder when you're done. And sure enough, it was probably uh, 4, 4.30 in the morning when uh, Richard, I could you know, hear him sneaking out. He didn't even come to wake me up, didn't bother. So anyway, I come slipping down off that walk-in cooler. I'd had a dream somewhat related to my past and it, it I'm sure it, it kind of uh, fomented the the thought process that I had in a few minutes, but uh, the aha moment that came that took me from 12,000 a week, or excuse me, 12,000 a month to $1.6 million a year, crystallized in my head over the next minute. I wandered out to the front dining room. I sat down at a table. I looked out the window and I couldn't have felt any more despair, any lower, any more defeated. And I thought, no, I'm not going to allow this. I can't. I've done other things. They've worked out. I've always found a way. What can I do? And I'm telling you, the thought that came through my head as I was gazing out that window What would I do if somebody held a gun to my head and said, Cameron, you need to get one brand new customer to come and order a pizza and pay full price within 24 hours or I'm pulling the trigger. Man, that will crystallize your thinking because what would you do if that were the case? Remember, discounting's off the table. Are you going to <laughs> throw a flyer on somebody's front porch and hope for the best? Hell no. Here's what you're gonna do. You've got 24 hours. You're gonna go start knocking on every door in your neighborhood. And remember, discounting's off the table. You actually have to sell your product. And so, Reader's Digest version goes like this. Knock, knock, knock. Hey neighbor, my name's Cameron and I own the pizzeria right down the street from you. And you may or may not have been in, I don't know. We make a really good pizza, but unless you've tried it, you have no way of knowing. So what I'd like to do is I'm gonna invite you to come over and buy a pizza. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw in a uh, free garden salad for you. I'm gonna give you a free cheese bread, and I'm gonna even put in a free two liter just to make the meal complete for you. And again, since you haven't tried our pizza, and I know you're gonna love it, but just in case you don't, if for any reason this isn't the best pizza you've ever had, if you aren't totally satisfied in every way, please just let me know, and I will refund your money every penny. That's what I decided I was going to do. And instead of knocking on doors, I decided to write a letter and start sending that out. And I'm telling you, I'm going to include a copy of that letter, or I'll give you a link to, so you can get it. But you are going to see what immediately doubled my sales. The first 30 days, they doubled. But the rocket had just ignited, and over the next three years, our sales went from $12,000 a month to almost $150,000 a month. And it all came from that question. 
Now, there's reasons why this question may work better than others. I don't want you feeling that you have to ask yourself these horrid things all the time, but it does have to do with somewhat activating the fear center in your mind. Now, if you've heard of Tony Robbins, he's the guy that says people will do far more to avoid pain than they will to gain pleasure. And one guy that I really admire is Larry Ellison, the founder of Oracle. And he's uh, been quoted as saying that most of your high achievers are not driven so much by the pursuit of wealth and riches as they are by the fear of failure. So I think that question really crystallizes things pretty quick for you because most, most people, myself included uh, up until then, there's a committee that goes on in your head. You're like, oh, how do I get more business? How do I get more people coming in? How do I do this? And you start to think of all these, all the possibilities, and it's this analysis paralysis that goes on. Hey, if you've got 24 hours to get a new customer in your place, you're gonna be, you know, what would you do? That question changed the course of my life. And the whole ride is in here and I'm gonna share every bit of it with you, so just hang tight. Till next time.